Hey all, here at osmvdxreviews.com, you're watching my retro review of the Sony Data Discman. This is the Electronic Book Player DD8. If you can believe it, this is actually one of the first ebook readers to have been ever released and launched in the world. The DD8 ebook uh, e reader, or if you can even call it an ebook reader, was produced by Sony and it was originally released only in Asia and in Japan, and it cost around $400 to $500, which is very expensive. And as you can see, it isn't like any ebook reader that you would traditionally find in today's standards. Instead of read these uh, discs that contained a book, you would put it in here, and it was more like a floppy disc reader than really an ebook reader. Um, but anyways, this isn't a real floppy either. Sony really loves its proprietary connections. So instead of using just a standard floppy disk to uh, read its books, um, Sony used uh, very special magnetic disks that it uh, customized and it sold in stores for a quite hefty price, as you can imagine, for each disk. Uh, for example, the one I have here is a new um, electronic encyclopedia that is that will actually retail for around $50 when it was first put out. Taking a look at the design of the actual reader, we can see that on the top we have a uh, matte finish screen, which makes it a little bit easier to read under direct sunlight. And it has a nice uh, LCD contrast to it. It's not e-ink or anything like that, of course. On the bottom here, we have access to um, F1, F2, F3, F4, and F5 keys, which correspond to hot keys, and they will take you to different functions when I'm in different books. We have an 8 mark or a bookmark button. Below here is a full QWERTY keyboard for adding annotations and notes into our books, and it's also refining different page numbers, as you can see. Down below here is a four-way navigation toggle for turning our pages left and right, up and down, and, and navigating through the operating system. We also have a yes-no key and a play-pause, which dubs as uh, the play-pause for playing back audiobooks and MP3s. And also we have an input mode for inputting different, again, bookmarks. The bottom is actually where the actual electronic book is inserted. You basically flip over the, the disc and you slide it into here. It opens up the door and you would keep on pressing until the thing is in there. To release the book again, you would uh, use a release button on the right hand side and the uh, book will actually shoot out like so. Additionally, we have a reset hole on the right hand side and also we have access to a power on and off switch, a contrast selector for the screen, and a video out function which I'm not really sure why it exists. On the top of the device we have access to a uh, selection for the different modes that you can use to play back the books. We also have a charger for, uh, in case you want to use rechargeable lithium ion batteries. On the left hand side we have a volume control for again that audio selection for audiobooks and narration modes, a 3.5mm headphone jack for listening to music, which is actually a very good feature. On the back we don't have anything, it's made in Japan it just says, and really the device just takes four AA batteries. Now this thing is an absolute battery monster, so it's going to eat up these batteries extremely fast, so you can imagine why um, it's really important to probably invest in four double A rechargeable batteries instead of using one time use batteries like I'm doing right now. And you can just really get a feel of how thick this thing is. Uh, I'm just going to take, uh, for example, this is a, a uh, cassette box. You can see that it holds like a traditional VHS uh, little compartment. You can see it's even thicker than like a DVD case or a VHS case, which means this thing is absolutely huge. Um, I'm just, I just want to compare it to something else really quick. So I'm just going to take a phone, for example, a Motorola i1, an Android-based handset. You can see that I'm going to turn this over to the phone, and you just get a feel of how huge and uh, ginormous this thing really is. It doesn't weigh too much because it's mostly made out of plastic, and it feels pretty good in the hand, but again, it weighs. I mean, again, the footprint is absolutely huge. So let's turn this thing on by sliding the on-off key, and it's going to show us data disk man. Let's change the contrast to be a little, a little bit darker. This ebook reader doesn't have a backlight to it, so it's more similar to a lot of e-ink readers in the market today. So it's not gonna be great for reading under darker environments, but it is good for reading under sunlight. So it's automatically gonna load our book, and it shows that this ebook contains, one, the encyclopedia, and two, more information about this disc. I can also change the language. Uh, right now, F3 is dubbing as the battery information key. A control key is is followed by F4, and a select key is followed by F5. So if we wanted to learn more about this ebook disc, I can move down to 2, and then press yes to uh, learn more about it. 
It's going to read it. You can actually hear the thing hum and think. It's like it's actually reading this thing like it's reading a DVD disc. So it has a lot of moving and optical parts in here, which I'm not a fan of, um, because it means that this thing is a lot more fragile and easy to break than it appears to be. If you if you're reading a book and you accidentally drop this thing, uh, I'm, you can bet that this thing was probably going to break, and you're not going to be able to use it again, which is unfortunate. So again, in the menu, we have disc uh, description, copyright notices, publisher information, version number, and how to use this disc. Let's just go to how to use this disc and learn more about that. You can see that loading times are actually adequate and surprisingly snappy for something that's based on an optical uh, disc-like uh, player. So it's not something that's going to be as instantaneous as, say, a pre-downloaded file, but it still is fairly fast, like you see. It tells you more about how to search things, how to go to the menu. You can see the contrast is pretty good. If you don't like it, you can also adjust it accordingly. And text looks pretty clear on the screen as well. So let's go back, go back, go back, and enter the actual book by pressing 1, and let's press select. It's going to load for a while, and we're finally there. I can do a menu search, a keyword search, or a word search, and since I'm using an encyclopedia book, this device basically becomes a electronic encyclopedia. If I wanted to find something, I would just type it using the keyboard and find it. So let's do a, a menu search, or a keyword search actually. Let's press select. It's going to think, it's going to hum, like a hard drive, and I'm going to enter some words. So let's do, for example, um, computer. I'm not, I'm not sure what this thing is going to find because it's so old, but let's find something about computers. And it's thinking now. So it found some stuff like accounting, um, adding machine, aerodynamics, aircraft, military. Not sure what that really has to do with computers, but it's forgivable considering the encyclopedia version in here is probably um, more than a decade out of date, so we can expect it not to know too much about that. Let's type in uh, accounting and see what it finds. And it's going to describe what accounting is. Compilation of financial information for use in uh, making economic decisions, bookkeeping, and you can just read more about that. And pretty much this is what the book reading experience is like. Of course, it, it is, this thing isn't all about you know electronic encyclopedias and dictionaries and translators. You can also get full-blown books. And books are a little bit more harder to find these days because they're so out of date and um, I'm not sure you can find too much except for classics like uh, Sherlock Holmes and stuff like that. But you can imagine that the ebook reading experience would be very similar. You would just be flipping back and forth the pages like so, going left and right or up and down. We'll do the same thing and then reading books like this. So overall the ebook reading experience isn't too bad. It's actually kind of responsive and the text is still very readable. It's just the bulkiness and the ridiculous, you know, thickness of this thing that really makes it antiquated and old fashioned. And also the fact that it uses a optical loading kind of disk drive instead of using a flash memory based uh, function. Um, but anyway, it's just a very interesting look back at kind of the grandfather of ebook readers in general and how far we've really come in terms of electronic ebook reading technologies. So thanks for watching this retro review and I hope that you found this, uh, this video helpful uh, here at osmvtxreviews.com.